of uh, the pleasure of working with the Polytechnic University of uh, Timisoara in this uh, digital culture project that you've already heard about in some of the previous uh, uh, presentations. And I will tell you a little bit about what we have recently been doing on integrating third party applications into Moodle. Now, if you don't use Moodle and you're interested, you can also use many of these applications outside of Moodle, of course. But the focus is on how to um, improve uh, these um, digital learning systems and learning management systems to provide a better experience to our learners. So what we would typically see in uh, any kind of middle school and uh, primary school or secondaries is, is a, a very rich environment, right? Where we celebrate achievements, we see activities, past activities that we have uh, seen and uh, many other content and uh, artifacts that make us remember and learn and motivate us. In comparison to that, our own uh, experiences when we go to uh, MOOCs, so that uh, Vlad and uh, uh, Andre also mentioned, uh, we have low typically completion rates and uh, our, even with the course at university, our courses look very different. So I've, I've used an example of one of my own courses here. These look nothing like the classroom that we just saw. It's a, it's a long, 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 long list of links and uh, sometimes a little bit of text that explains, but otherwise uh, what I would call a dead list of, of, of links, a link fest. And this certainly has uh, not the most uh, motivating uh, characteristics. So we've been looking into how to improve this. And uh, you've seen already in the examples from Vlad actually some ways of, of how to improve that. And I just wanted to show you here an example of how courses, but from the people that make money off of this actually who are not uh, paid uh, by the states, but uh, Coursera, a big MOOC platform. And we, when we look at this, we see a, you know, a very sober uh, uh, list of activities. And of course, these are mostly driven by videos as they would be in these mass and open online courses. So there's not so much um, content, of course, here uh, that allows for face-to-face -face, uh, interactions with students. Now, what I wanted to show you is basically on how we can change this uh, material and how can we get rid of this problem of these very uh, long lists of uh, activities that we see. And what you saw before, this is the same course actually that I just showed you this uh, video of, and we can fold these courses uh, differently. So one way of, of addressing this problem of the very, very long scroll or what we call the scroll of death is to fold these. And we can do this in, in Moodle, for example, through themes uh, or this uh, uh, grid format here. And the other thing is that we can fold content actually. So this is uh, what I wanted to show you here. So this is what this content looked before. And this is how it looks after. So before I tell you about all these apps, I need to tell you a little bit uh, quickly on what the problem is with these long uh, scrolling lists, uh, how to address that and how to make the, the course, in a, in a sense, a better place that resembles more the place that you saw in the very first picture in the schoolroom. So here we can now uh, see a very clean, uh, comparatively clean uh, list actually of activities because what, what I'm teaching is a, a course that is flipped, which means that the students have to watch videos in preparation to the course. So there's a long list of, of videos here and uh, didactics or research in, uh, in uh, education uh, tells us that we should make these videos short. And so the, one of the problems is that all of a sudden then we have a long list. These are now folded here into uh, this, uh, this part. So we save a lot of uh, material uh, or space, so to speak, in, in, in this. And here we have the same uh, content 
uh, and we can clearly see now more the structure of a class, you know, what people have to do in preparation during the workshop and after a workshop. Now, let me show you what this means actually. So what, what we mean by, by this folding. So in, in order to fold material, I've, we've created uh, something that allows us to now expand these uh, elements here and allows us to therefore save a lot of the space and therefore make content much more um, easily to have an overview of and where you need, you can go into, into the details. This means also that we can, uh, for example, include exercise descriptions now that are used to have in, in links and you would have to open uh, new um, windows or tabs on your internet browser and you can now find these content and or these instructions here in line inside the courses. So you don't have to go away. One of the big problems of course is that a lot of students might just be uh, following other things on their on their computers. So now we can fold this away. Another thing we, we can provide people is, is we can provide resources. This is a Google Drive folder that we can share and make accessible. And that reduces the work I have to do as a teacher that you need to uh, update this uh, every time uh, you, you run your course again. So you can directly em embed these uh, into your, into your courses. Now we're coming to the really interesting things because this, what you just saw is, is, is very typical for the, the, the kind of administrative uh, aspects of courses that you need to do, but we can integrate other activities. And this looks now more like what you would expect from a classroom actually. So this is from uh, previous years runs or the pre, the, the course I ran uh, this uh, spring when everything was in Corona lockdown and we could not meet. And uh, we used this um, app called uh, Miro, for example, to do group work. And uh, Maria, if you can share the, the bit.ly link or you can use that, you can come to this board, actually interact with it, add content and, and do things here. So let me uh, try that. I can. I should be able to do that. For example, I can add this screenshot here inside this, uh, this board and make it bigger. And then everybody can, uh, you can have all these students join in. And one of the nice thing that you now see is that, oh my goodness, there are lots of people. One of the things that is that what I really like about these tools is that they provide a sense of other students actually doing the work, um, which can be uh, even a problem in in face to face uh, teaching when you have a large class. I often have courses with uh, 70 to 100 uh, students. So it's very nice uh, to, to for them to to see that actually some of the other students are also participating in, in, in these activities. And I see now that we have a lot of uh, people joining. I have not tested the limits of, of, of Miro, but uh, you can try and moving things around. You can try, uh, uh, yes, wonderful, working just as we thought. And of course, as a teacher, when you run this, you can then get a good sense of what's actually going on in, in, in your course. And uh, as I said, you can also use this, of course, outside of, of Moodle, but you can now see this as a much more engaging way of uh, looking at uh, past work. So all of the activities you see here was actually student um, activities and uh, walked through in the workshops for discussion and their own exploration. So this gives you a, a quite a good sense, I think what it means to have one of these uh, tools at, at your proposal. I will leave you here to play with that in the background. Um, and I will return to, to this. So the question is, of course, uh, how do you actually um, solve this problem technically? And the, the good news is, 
all you would need to do is talk to your friendly Moodle administrator and ask them to install something called the Generico filter. So you can, it's linked from the, uh, the, the presentation. And if you want to look it up, you can uh, download the, the presentation after. I will make that uh, accessible um, through Diana. Um, and this filter basically does the work for you. So the, the filter uh, allows you to embed content easily. And what, what that means is that if you know how to do something in Moodle, so typically when you have a, a section, and you can add an activity or a resource here. Then you would get this uh, next uh, step where you can add what are called activities in Moodle. In this case, it's a simple label that we use. And then you would get this editor uh, button uh, or editor uh, applet. And if you expand this and you've installed this generico filter, there will be this G here. And now if you click on this G, you will then get all the templates that uh, we included. So for example, YouTube's, uh, YouTube or uh, collapsible buttons that I've already shown you or Miro, for example. So let's assume we uh, and want to embed Miro. Now all we need to do is to look up the, the ID of that Miro board so we would get that from the URL. So this is the only time where it gets slightly technical. You need to go into the internet address of this um, Miro board, and then you can copy that into this Miro ID field. And then you would need to give this element a name, and then you can insert it. And then you would see this very uh, uh, interesting text string here that basically says nothing that generico, this filter, has to interpret this and apply the Miro template that we have created for you. And this is the ID here, and this is the name. So we save this. Now we have this collapsible button here with Miro. If we click on it, we can open it up and we have this uh, material here and ready for the students to use. So we can embed pretty much anything that provides an embed code most uh, Many, many activities or third party apps provide these embedding codes. Um, you can often see this with this uh, kind of icon or, or symbolism. And what you can do is, for example, the whole Google uh, suite you can, you can use, for example, you can include uh, slides, you know, forms, uh, Word documents, spreadsheets. If you have fewer than 50 students, they can even collaborate in these and, and edit this at the same time. Um, if they just want to view, it's unlimited. That's what we're currently doing. You're looking at actually a slideshow that I'm running from inside my Moodle. And you can have, you can have many, many, many people um, following this. There are other collaboration tools. Miro, I showed you, but maybe you have heard of Padlet. It's another way of uh, doing things is, is basically structuring, uh, learning tasks or, or brainstorms. You can also use a tool or like Trello, where you uh, manage workflow and, and to-do lists and tasks and many more. These are just some of our favorites that we, that we like. You can also include commenting in, in case you run a Reddit uh, thread somewhere, you can embed that. You can embed Twitter or Yammer, a recent uh, Microsoft um, addition to their, to their product portfolio and make it easy for people to comment inside uh, Moodle courses. And then there are the big ones that are like learning environments that you can embed. So for example, you can include GeoGebra. So while in your, in your course, people can do all these things here with plotting numbers and, and uh, uh, calculations or processing, programming and processing they can do inside the course or you can include GitHub if you're interested in, in, in programming and how to share code. So there are a number of uh, third-party apps that allow you to either show content in line, for example, the, the, the one uh, presentation that you're seeing right now, or PDFs or folders. That's what I showed you before. You, we have these uh, collaboration tools uh, from, 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 for example, Google. You can also get it from Microsoft if you have OneDrive and uh, your university or facility supports that, you can include that too. 
in learning environments. So there, and this is just the tip of the iceberg and some of the, the things that we found uh, very, very helpful in, in getting our courses in Moodle to, to the next level. And in case anybody has questions, um, I'd be happy to take that. If you want to tell me a little bit about which one of these uh, tools you found uh, most interesting or uh, um, maybe exciting, uh, you can go to this bit.ly link here, Maria, if you post that into the chat uh, and you can leave maybe the, your favorite uh, things that you discovered, use just a, a single or a couple of words and then you can uh, contribute to this word cloud um, that I set up 